Hi guys, my name is Maria De Simone. Welcome to my channel. I am a professional astrologer and I wanted to talk to you guys today about one of my favorite eclipses that is happening in 2024. It's happening on April 8th. This is a solar eclipse in Aries and it is a North Node eclipse. Stay tuned to find out why I'm so excited about it and what it means for you because I am going to tell you what it means for you based on your sun sign and rising sign a little bit later on. Before I get to that, I'm going to break down the eclipse energy in general. And before I do that, <laughs> I wanted to remind you guys that registration is open for my next transits class. So just give me a minute to explain this for those of you who are students of astrology. If you already know how to analyze a horoscope through the level of aspect analysis, and you are thinking about branching into predictive astrology, this is the class you want to take first. Studying transits is a must. It is the backbone of all predictive astrology for every astrologer, no matter what your preference is as a predictive astrologer in terms of framework and background. Everybody needs to know transits. And in my class, I give you a very solid foundation. I will make sure that you all learn in my class how to properly organize your measurements, what is and is not important, what to look for, how to make predictions for anyone looking at the themes ahead for major life events and even for the more minor things that happen in our lives. So I hope you decide to join me. Registration is open on my website, insightfulastrology.com, and the early bird registration rate is available until March 25th. It saves you $50 off tuition. All classes are done via Zoom and recorded, so if you cannot attend live, don't worry. You will get the recording, and all of my classes are personalized using your charts in the lesson plans and homework assignments. So for the transits class, what you all get to do once you've registered is you get to email me with a major date, an event that you had in your past, and you will learn how to predict the future by studying the past. So everybody gets to do that. And you also will get a one year ahead time search for your major transits. And you're going to learn how to organize these measurements and figure out what are your main predictive themes for your year ahead. So it is very in-depth. It is a really fun class. I hope you decide to join me. But again, you must already know how to read a birth chart through the level of aspect analysis before you're ready to branch into transit. Okay, so let's talk about this eclipse. I was noodling on it this morning. It was on my mind. And I'm, I'm a fan of this eclipse. So yes, Mercury will be retrograde at the time of this eclipse, but who cares? That doesn't mean anything negative at all. We have to analyze each eclipse in terms of what it's doing in the sky holistically, how it's connecting to everything else. What is the ruler of the eclipse doing? And what type of an eclipse is it? Is it a north node eclipse, which wants to give, or is it a south node eclipse, which wants to take and drain? This is a solar eclipse on April 8th at 19 degrees, 24 minutes of Aries. And this eclipse is saying brand new beginning. This is major opportunity for everybody. And it is a North Node eclipse, which means the energy of giving something to you, of helping you to grow something that you are destined towards. This is the energy of the, of the eclipse happening. And I'm loving that. Now, here's what's interesting. Mercury is retrograde in Aries at the time of the eclipse, and Mercury is close to the degree of the eclipse. And the ruler of the eclipse, which is Mars, is in Pisces next to Saturn at the time of the eclipse. So Mars is actually applying to a conjunction. Think of it as it's about to collide into Saturn and Pisces. When I think about the energy of Mars colliding into Saturn and Pisces at the same time that Mercury is retrograde, and this is yet a new moon eclipse and a north node eclipse, I literally got the, I wrote this down actually, and this is the title, this is going to be the title of the eclipse as far as I'm concerned, you do you boo, but clarify what you want first. So that's the energy of this eclipse. We are all going to be feeling this strong desire to go after something 
that is deeply important to us, that is calling our name, something that speaks to who we really are and will help to support our authenticity in this lifetime, in this journey, at this particular juncture in our lives. And so Aries is the sign that is unapologetically about the self. And we are all being cosmically supported now with this eclipse when we do something that is self-directed, that is supporting what is true to us and what we desire, what we want. Having said that, because this eclipse occurs as Mars and Pisces is crashing into Saturn and as Mercury is retrograde, we may feel initially like we're not really sure about this path. We may be a little bit uh, second guessing ourselves, have some trepidation connected to moving forward. And yes, there may be that muddling sensation in our brains where we are, we have to clarify this. Okay, so Mercury and Aries by itself is very speedy thinker, very let's go, let's, let's get this done. Whatever's on your mind, you immediately take action to, to achieve it. But Mercury is retrograde in Aries. And what that says is, I don't see this as bad. I see this as good because it's going to erase the possibility for impulsivity for us. And Mars going into Saturn says the same thing. We are not going to be impulsive about whatever it is we're moving towards with this eclipse, guys. We are going to be much more deliberate. And even though Mars and Saturn are in the, the gentle ephemeral sign Pisces, Mars to Saturn is Mars to Saturn, okay? Mars and Saturn together, if they were plugging in to something else in the sky by square or opposition, it would feel like a stalemate. It would feel like driving with one foot on the gas pedal, the other foot on the brakes, and we're not going anywhere. And, we're, and we have all this anger and steam and frustration because we're not going anywhere. But that's not the case with this eclipse, guys. Mars and Saturn are engaged in a supportive sextile to Jupiter in Taurus. There is support here. There is not stress. And so I very much feel that Mars and Saturn are going to work together and do the very best that they can for us at the time of this eclipse, which is leading us to take inspired action towards this particular new goal, this new self-development process that we're embarking on. And we're going to do it with so much careful deliberation. We're not going to be sloppy about this, guys. Mercury's retrograde in Aries, and that's saying we're going to slow down enough to make sure that this will succeed the first time, that this will prevail and we'll, we'll do well with this. So, sorry, hazards of doing a live video. My niece was just texting me. We've got stuff going on with my daughter's wedding, but that's another video, another time, another story. Anyway, let's now discuss what is happening for all of you by your sun sign and your rising sign. Of course, please remember the rising sign forecast is the most accurate, the, the closest mathematically. I'm not looking at your birth chart, so I don't know exactly where this eclipse falls and I certainly don't know what aspects this eclipse is making to the rest of your chart. That is a huge mitigating factor and you have to understand that. Without that information, the very, very specific details about how this eclipse affects you is, is missing. For any astrologer, no astrologer can have that unless we are your astrologer and you've hired us and we're all fine. Then we're looking at the full picture. But this is a good general forecast, a good general understanding based on your rising sign. And then if you go ahead and watch for your sun sign after that, you're, it's thematic. I always say rising sign forecast is mathematic. Sun sign forecast is thematic. Your job is to watch them both, blend the information together, and you have a really good profile. It's like a general profile of how a certain energy can affect you at any given point. So of course, we are specifically talking about the solar eclipse in Aries, April 8th. And let's get into it. If you are an Aries rising or an Aries sun sign, your time has come. Your time has arrived, my friend, especially if the degree of your sun sign or rising sign is close to that 19 degree Aries mark. 
three degrees in either direction is gonna be the strongest, but I will go up to five degrees if you insist that you're feeling it. But the stingy astrologer, the judicious astrologer in me wants to stick to three degrees on either side, to be fair. So it will change your life if this eclipse is within three degrees of your rising or sun sign. And it is saying that you do you boo energy is on fire for you guys. There is something that you are going to successfully implement connected to your physical appearance, to your body, to your identity, your personality that is so aligned to who you really are. And I will tell you, Aries, that there is a huge spiritual component here for you because Mars and Saturn are in Pisces over in your 12th house. And so what you're doing is you're eradicating self-doubt, imposter syndrome, fear, analysis paralysis, all that anxiety that just keeps you kind of stuck and, and not moving forward in the amazing direction that you know you want to take your life and your life path. This is the time when you're going to realize that the only person who has been holding you back, Aries, has been you. And so you're reframing so much about what's going on in here to help you be more authentic and genuine to yourself and to your life path. And so you're fiercely independent right now. You are unapologetically you right now, and this eclipse is supporting it. Anything you start, as long as it is true to who you are, I know it will succeed. So if you are a Taurus rising or Taurus sun sign, this eclipse is happening in your hidden 12th house. And it is a spiritual awakening without a doubt for you guys. It is a huge spiritual turning point where you're going in a direction. It's like the road less traveled. That's how I see this for you because Aries does its own thing. Aries is pioneering and groundbreaking. So you are doing this pioneering groundbreaking energy. It's happening in your 12th house. So you are you're cutting through the fog. You're cutting through the uncertainty that is connected to your spiritual beliefs, your intuition. You're, you're not going to be doubting your intuition anymore, Taurus. You're really going to be moving forward and trusting that. And you're letting go of some fears. You are also, you know, I, I think that for you, this is you coming out of hiding that's going to be happening very soon for you because the ruler of this eclipse is Mars in your 11th house of social energy connected to Saturn. You have been much more in hermit mode lately, Taurus, and this eclipse might be the first indication that you're getting ready to come out of the dark, come out of the closet, come out of hiding, and you're doing it because you have spiritually replenished yourself. So understand that this time out that you've been taking, it has been super necessary for you. And you are, you are, you have recharged your spiritual batteries. And this new moon solar eclipse in your 12th house is saying, I'm charged. I'm all charged up and I'm ready to go. And as long as I'm aligned to my spiritual truths, I cannot be wrong. So that's your energy for you, Taurus. Now, Gemini and Gemini rising. This eclipse is going to fall in your 11th house. Social networks. It is Super important for you to be open to new possibilities because new friendships and alliances are going to be forming for you. There is a destined person or group or organization that's coming into your life connected to this eclipse that is fully embracing you for you, that sees you, fully loves you and embraces you for who you are and supports your goals, especially professional goals worldly goals, but it doesn't have to be limited to that. This is any, any goal that you have that's tied to a deep aspiration. And Gemini, you are going to be the leader. You're going to be seen by masses of people connected to whatever this group is as fearless, as a pioneer, and as just a trailblazer, complete trailblazer. So this is an exciting time for you, Gemini. Now, Cancer, this eclipse happens in your career sector. Hello. Hello, promotion. Hello, new business. Hello, going in a new career path that's really true to you. I think Cancers have been 
very hard on themselves with career. You may have been in a situation where you were thinking about getting out of a career path altogether, or you've been so exhausted and drained. And at the 11th hour, you're going to see just how valued you are. I feel like you, whatever decision you make, and I do think that you're going to have an opportunity to be a leader with whatever it is that you are doing, but whatever decision you make, it is aligned to self-respect. You're not committing yourself to a path, to a career path where you feel like you're selling out in any way or where you feel like you're washed out and drained and tired. That's over. You would have left that behind if that's the case. Now, with this new opportunity that you're taking, it puts you in the driver's seat. You could literally have a situation, Cancer, where a job, a position is created for you. A title is created for you. That's how amazing this eclipse is. And yes, it may require some advanced training, some extra training, and that's okay. So don't be scared about that if that's the case, but it is something that you should take advantage of. And if you are thinking about starting a new business or going into a new career path entirely, this eclipse is very much supporting that energy. So I would say go for it. This could also be, for some of you, retirement, or it could be a decision to come out of retirement if you have been retired and you're just not happy being retired. It could be any of that for you. Leo, Leo rising. This is in a ninth house eclipse for you. And so this is all about your beliefs, spirituality, international travel, higher mind. I think for a lot of you, this is about going back to school and deciding to get an advanced credential. You may already be in school. And if you are, this eclipse is going to take away all of your self-doubt and uncertainty. This eclipse is going to remind you that you are on path. You are on the right track. And what you are doing now is you're coming into your own as far as your studies, as far as what it is that you're trying to achieve educationally, ed academically. And in terms of spiritual pursuits, you are going to go your own way and you're not going to feel like you need to justify it or explain it or apologize to other people for your beliefs. No, you are completely 100% on path. Some of you may be initiating some type of legal situation that helps you feel more independent, back in the driver's seat, more courageous, and that would be fine if that's the case. And the other thing is this eclipse can really give you an opportunity for international travel and pursuits. So I would say go for it if you have that opportunity. Virgo, Virgo rising, this eclipse happens in your eighth house. And so now we are talking about shared resources. We are talking about death and, and endings, but this eclipse is new beginnings. So this could be the type of situation where if there is a death that has been expected, there may be an inheritance that's coming right after connected to that death because there is something faded that brings you independence or brings you a new beginning in your life because of this death or ending. And that could be symbolic. It doesn't have to be that somebody is actually dying, but that is a possibility for some of you. Now for others, this is about shared resources. This could be the ending of any kind of debt and moving forward with a new, maybe a new financial advisor, a new retirement plan, being very assertive and proactive about these shared financial matters, applying for a mortgage maybe for the first time and getting that house that you've always wanted or a student loans, car loan, business loan, a business venture, that would be really, if you're looking to get venture capital or have a business relationship with a partner where you're sharing your finances and you're sharing a vision, this is a really good eclipse to help support that. So I do like that for you. Now for Libras, okay, Libra rising, this eclipse is happening in your seventh house of commitment, of partnership, of marriage. And it is a North Node eclipse. So for those of you Libras who are already engaged, who are already planning on getting married, this is a faded, destined marriage that is super meant to be, okay? I will tell you, my daughter has Libra rising. 
at 18 degrees. So this eclipse is exactly on her marriage sector and she is getting married after this eclipse in May. So for her, this is completely on point. Obviously not every Libra or Libra rising is getting married, okay? There are other things that have to be happening in your birth chart. But in general, please know that when the nodes and the eclipses are connecting between your first and your seventh house, you go through an 18 month period of major turning points in terms of identity and relationship. And for Libras especially, because the North node of destiny and where you're supposed to grow and expand is in the partnership sector, there is a very decided favorable energy leaning towards partnership dynamics for Libra. And so if the math is really close to that 19 degree mark, you are gonna be a Libra rising or a Libra sun who very likely has a brand new start in a relationship. Now, for some of you, this could be that brand new start could be getting out of a dead marriage that you've been in for a long time, but haven't had the courage to get out of. Remember, this North Node in Aries and the Mercury retrograde in Aries are all giving you the courage to rethink whatever you have to in terms of partnership dynamics in order to be true to yourself. So that could be happening for some of you Libras, but if this is not your personal relationship, and of course, this could also, if you're single, this could bring a new relationship in for sure over the next six months. But if this is not about your personal relationship, Libra, this is business. This could be new clients. If you're in a business where you see clients, it could be an opportunity for a new business partner, or maybe you're hiring an agent, a publicist, a manager, a lawyer, somebody with a legal relationship to you, and it would be very favored. Scorpio, Scorpio rising, this, this eclipse is happening in your sixth house of illness and the restoration of health. So the sixth house is traditionally ill health, not good health, but our sixth house profile helps us understand how to restore our health and what we can do to help alleviate certain ailments, certain health problems. And this new moon, solar eclipse, north node in your sixth house is saying new protocol equals results. So it's almost like you have to take your health in your own hands, Scorpio. If there is something going on with your health, you need to be the boss. Listening blindly to what doctors are saying might not be working for you. You have to, I don't want to say be your own doctor exactly, obviously consult with the professionals, but you have to be proactive. You have to be insistent that if you don't agree with somebody, you get a second opinion or you question it, or you make sure it's clarified until you understand it and you're on board. You have to be on the same page as your healthcare team. Actually, it's the reverse. I think they need to be on the same page as you because this is an Aries eclipse. So it's about you and your agenda. Now, in terms of work, you may be finding new work. You may be assertively pursuing some kind of new routine that helps restore wellness, whether it's healthcare, physical, going to the gym, hiring a trainer, eating plan, any of that is so favored at this time. Now, Sagittarius, Sagittarius rising, this eclipse falls in your fifth house. Children, hello, baby making. Romance, pleasure, whatever brings your heart joy, whatever makes you smile, that's your fifth house space. And so this eclipse here can be a brand new romance if you are single. It could be having a baby or trying to have a baby or some new development with a child in your life, if you already have children, a very new development about a, with a child that allows them to go in an independent direction. This could also be about starting something new in terms of a creative enterprise that truly brings you joy. Capricorn, Capricorn rising, it is a fourth house eclipse. That is home and family dynamics. So yes, this could be relocation, moving, independent living, meaning some of you may be living on your own now. Maybe you've never lived alone before and now you're in a situation where you're going to be living alone or you're making the decisions if you live with somebody else. You're calling the shots. You are going to do something about your living situation that really speaks to you and your desires and what you want and everybody else is just going to have to get on board. <laughs> this could also be, if it's not a relocation, this could be a new beginning for one of your parents. If, um, if your parents are with you, it could definitely be some kind of new energy around parents or news in the family, some kind of domestic family news or event that puts you all as a family, as a tribe on a new path, on a new destined path for your family's highest good. Aquarius or Aquarius rising, this is an eclipse that happens in your third house. This is short trips, communication, messages, and siblings. 
So there can be a very important new beginning for a sibling, maybe even a cousin. This can be about short trips, or this can be about starting something new connected to communications that is very independent, very pioneering and groundbreaking, whether it is a podcast, a YouTube channel, whether it is a blog or you teaching a class or writing something, starting to write a book maybe, something communications related that is very important to you. Or again, this could be connected to something in your neighborhood or a short trip. Maybe your neighborhood is starting a brand new, let's say, I don't know, beautification project and that somehow affects you to the extent of it renews your happiness living in your neighborhood. That's another example, smaller. But that is what's happening for Aquarius. It's very much in the mind and you are an independent thinker and you're doing something that is connected to your idea and your path. Pisces, Pisces rising. This eclipse occurs in your second house of livelihood, earned income, talents. So absolutely, you have new income potential opening up. I love it. The more entrepreneurial this idea is, the more favorable it, it is because it's in Aries. And so Aries is that, that just fire starter, go-getting sign, very entrepreneurial. So anything that you start where you are proactively monetizing your talents and abilities, where you are going after the money, chasing the money, you're going to succeed. So just go for it. Go get it. This is, this is the universe saying yes to you with money, with using your talents. And if you're thinking about starting a side hustle that actually can turn into your main hustle because it's all about you and you're using your talents, this is the time to do it. It's very well supported. Okay, so Pisces, that's what I have for you. All of the signs, you now have your general horoscope forecast for this particular eclipse energy. Again, remember, I'm not looking at your specific birth chart, so I don't have every detail, but just this eclipse alone, that's the energy that's available to you. Please let me know in the comments below how this eclipse is affecting you and your reality. What is your rising sign? What is your sun sign? What has happened? What are you implementing? What are you doing that is going to really reinforce that you do you nature of this eclipse successfully? I want to know. And remember, if you've enjoyed this video, hit that like button and please share and subscribe to the channel for more high quality astrology content. All right, guys, I will talk to you soon. Bye.